What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back to my unit trophy series for Fire Emblem Heroes. This time we're going to be taking a look at Mad King Ashnard and these are the topics I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'll be giving you guys my review and 11 builds for him. So with that said, let us begin. I will bring the fight to you. Ashnard is a sword flyer with a typical stat spread of a tank where he has got high defense, workable resistance and a pretty high attack at base 37 and extremely low speed. His weapon is Gurgurant which is a 16 might exclusive weapon giving him the IO shield effect which neutralizes his flying weakness to bows and also Excalibur magic. This effect built into his weapon is extremely good and it opens up his Sacred Seal slot so he doesn't need to run Iod Shield Sacred Seal like all of the other tanky flyers. It also gives him plus 3 defense which is incredible on top of his already solid defense stat. And the final condition of this weapon is that it inflicts minus 5 attack and defense debuff on foes within 2 spaces during the combat. And this effect is pretty similar to Tharja's Hex Tome or Kyria's Mirage Rod. And we have seen how this kind of effect is so powerful because it makes him more bulky, it gives him more attack power. This is always going to be active for him and it can also support his allies if he's in the right position. And because these debuffs are in combat, it can stack up with visible debuffs from chill skills, ploy skills and smoke skills. So that can make him incredibly tanky and strong. This preferred weapon is extremely good and super useful to a unit like him and it goes really well with his playstyle. His other skills are Distant Defense and even Attack Wave. So these skills don't really bring anything new to the table because we have already had these skills on previous Grey Linets. Garen has got Distant Defense and Fallen Deltia has got even Attack Wave. This was the perfect opportunity in my opinion to give us Guidance or Aerobatics on a free unit but oh well. And his special is Dragon Fang which is not really all that optimal. Bonfire Ignis are almost always going to be much much better for him and Noontime and Solar are also really good options. Sword Flyers are not really as saturated as Lance Flyers and we don't really have too many easily available Sword Flyers as it is. A lot of the Sword Flyers are either very player phase oriented and are really fast and strong and some other ones are kind of like Duelists which can function in both phases but they don't really have this much attack or this much resistance. So the only apt comparison we can do for Ashnard is to Altina who was given out as a free unit for a month as a reward from a Hero Rises event. And Altina has got really similar stat spread to him. Her slotty skill is also similar to Ashnard's weapon giving her Iod Shield effect and giving her more attack and defense. But this is a conditional effect and Ashnard's weapon is always going to be active. So that's the difference. Obviously I'm not saying that Ashnard is as good as Altina because he's not. He doesn't have a dual phase brave weapon and he doesn't have a preferred special. But what I'm trying to say is that if you look at their raw stat spread you will see how min-max Ashnard is and that is absolutely impressive for a free unit. Not to mention, unlike Altina, getting merges on Ashnard is going to be very easy with Heroic Rails and he can also be blessed with Blessings unlike Altina and can be used in any season. Overall, Ashnard is an absolutely amazing unit with really incredible preferred weapon and a very unique stat spread for all of the available flyers that we have got. And he functions as a beast of an enemy phase unit and even at low merges his bulk is extremely respectable and if he go all the way then he can function as an insane tank in the enemy phase. Having IO shield built into his weapon is extremely good for opening up more options and the in combat debuffs help him tremendously as a tank and even as a hard hitting unit. So in my opinion he's one of the best free to units that we have got. Excellent! So good! His first build is the absolute budget build with just steady stance 3, quick repose 2 and attack smoke. So this is a really cheap build to put together and even at low merges he's gonna be having effectively 55 defense and 42 resistance thanks to the in combat debuffs of his weapon and with all of the skills in this budget build. You could obviously run guard and slot B and quick repose as a sacred seal option to stop enemies from charging up their specials and renewal seal is also an option for self sustainability. Ignis, Noontime and Soul are all good options for his specials. The next build is also a budget build but using double bonds. So attack defense bond is available on Rutger and bond skills do synergize pretty well with his playstyle because he's an enemy phase unit and uh, it's really easy to make bond skills work in the enemy phase. So this can give him a lot of attack, defense and resistance. The next build is also a budget build utilizing sturdy stance 2 from Altena 
and Heavy Blade Sacred Teal. So his attack is pretty high and the in-combat debuff from his weapon effectively puts him at like 65 attacks. So that is really really good for triggering Heavy Blade. So you can use Heavy Blade and trigger Ignis in a single round of combat when he gets doubled. And Ignis is going to be doing massive 34 damage with his high defense. So this build could be used for a high damage output. And now we move on to some of the expensive builds. Ashnard's best slot skill is Distant Counter by far. And this is ideally the best build for Ashnard because it fully utilizes his bulk and his attack stats so he could easily take on range units. And he's super bulky at plus 10 merge. The seal slot is open so you could run something else and in future Bracing Stand Sacred Seal could also be run. And he can also be used as a fully focused melee tank with this build with Fortress Defense Res. So he can effectively have 55 defense and 51 resistance. The problem with this build is that there is no distant counter, so you cannot really retaliate back to range units, which he could have been able to. And Fortress Defense Res is going to be inferior to Bracing Stance 3 whenever it comes out, because it gives him bulk and the guard effect, which he really appreciates. Now, Flyers don't really have too many options for Slot B, unfortunately, so a lot of times he's just going to be locked to, like, Quick Repose and stuff like that. But... You could also run a premium option and Mystic Boost for giving him self-sustainability. And Tier 4 skills have incredible synergy with his weapon because they are visible debuffs. And his weapon gives him the in-combat debuff. So Threatened Tier 4 skills are really good for getting those debuffs and also making him powerful. However, this build is so expensive requiring a Mythic Unit in Air and a Seasonal Unit in Valentine Rudolph. As I said before, the guard effect is really good, and because of Ashnard's low speed, it means that it's really easy for him to get doubled and attacked by specials of the foe, so tier 4 stand skill is perfect and it solves this issue by giving him the guard effect. And as I said, threatened skills at tier 4 are really good, but the only problem is that he's gonna be missing out on distant counters, so it does come at an opportunity cost because with his stat spread, he would love to have distant counter, but if you wanna get the guard effect, well, having Crooker Post in Slot B, then you would have to do this. The best thing about stand skills is that you don't really have a threshold to get the guard effect, uh, like the Slot B guard skill, which can be less desirable at times. His next build is for Arena. So he has got 167 BST, and after the first merge, he will go up to 170 BST. So he can score as much as Young Minerva, and this is a max Arena score build for him. You could run any kind of 400 assist skill, like Rally Up skill or Dual Rally Plus skills, Harsh Command, any of those things. You have to run a high scoring special like Aether, Gale Force, Blue Flame or Ruptured Sky. Aether and Gale Force are the budget options. And of course he loves this encounter as I said. And he can be insanely tanky in Arena and can easily keep up with the Whale units. And also bait and kill archers like Legendary Leaf. And in the Fire Season he can also take on threats like Legendary Celica. He could use him as a guidance support because movement is absolutely invaluable in arena where you have no positional skills on your units because you have to run dual rally skills for the scoring so guidance is extremely good there and his mobility in general is very fantastic. Once again he can run guard in slot B because armor units are going to be having bull fighter, vengeful fighter and special fighter like that in arena so you could just prevent their specials. Or if you have a Rue skill on your Arena core, then that is definitely preferable and much better than running Guard in Slot B because he retains Quick Repose in Slot B and can still run Guidance. Now we're going to be taking a look at Ashnard from Aetherate's perspective. So because of Ashnard's top tier bulk, he can function as a great Aetherate super tank. So he could run dull range to just ignore buffs from range foes and range foes are more threatening in Aetherate's generally. And he can also run Pulse Smoke to deal with Infantry Pulse teams. All of the offensive mythics at the time of making this video are Flyers, Air, Peony, Altina, Naga. So he has got great synergy with them because they can provide him with Horn, Fortify or Ward Flyer support, which is just perfect. You could run Soul or Noontime for self-sustainability and that is going to be extremely important for taking on multiple foes. Noontime is going to be a bit better if you're going to be running him with someone like Brave Lucina. He can also be used as a Vantage Sweeper in Aether Raids. Now he doesn't really have a damage output similar to a Blade Tome or Broadleaf Fan, but he still has really good attack. He can effectively have 76 attack unboosted with this build and with Defense Smoke active, effectively 83 attack. So that is pretty great for Vantage Sweeping and he can definitely sweep teams with Squishy Mages. And once again, all of the offensive Mythics are Flyers, so he has great synergy with them. And in the Astro season, he can actually tank through Seers, which are really, really common. 
And that is a really great thing because even Altina at times can struggle taking on a Thrasir because of killing intent. And Altina has to run Deflect, Magic, Sacred Seal to consistently tank uh, Thrasir's in Aether Raids. But with Ashnard, because he can be blessed, he can have more HP than Altina. And he also has the in-combat debuff with his Gurgurant. So that is going to be helping him tank Thrasir's much better. Mirror Stance or Brazen Attack Resistance are also some great options for the Sacred Seal. And Pot Smoke could be run because Ashnard is pretty tanky, that's the best part about him. So Pot Smoke could help you against Infantry Pulse teams. The final build for him is for Aether Raid's defense. Because he's so bulky, he can be used as a frontline tank for your Aether Raid's defense team. And his weapon's effect actually can help your allies too if he's positioned properly. And that can just help them reduce the damage taken. A tier 4 stand skill can help stop the charging up of specials on foe and this is a great way of making your team have a check against Neuron Zeal, Legendary Leaf and Gale for shenanigans. Dot range is gonna be ignoring buffs from range units and this can help him not get sniped by a nuke and Panic Smoke is really good with this build. For Aetherate's offense, Pulse Smoke is gonna be better and for defense, Panic Smoke I think is better because visible buffs are really common and even if he doesn't counter attack to a ranged foe, he will still trigger Panic Smoke to affect the foes and just annoy them. You could also run Guidance or Ground Orders to run Rally Trap shenanigans in Aether Raids. And obviously Distant Counter can be run, but in my opinion, it's really not worth losing the Guard Effect. I value Guard Effect more in Aether Raids uh, defense over Distant Counter personally. Quick Repose can be run on Slot B or Sacred Seal. I just put Dull Range and Distant Defense to make him bulky. Don't disappoint me! Ashnard is going to be taking you 2200 Grails to plus and merge him, and if you wait like 6-7 months for the final merge, then you could just spend 1750 Grails on him and just plus and merge him that way. And there are multiple reasons why you may or may not want to invest into him with your Hero Grails, so let's go over them. First of all, he's a rare archetype for a Red Flyer and quite unique with a really good preferred weapon, so that alone makes him a really really good candidate to be invested into. Not only that, he has got min-max stat line that allows him to function well in various game modes. As you saw with the builds, he can function in in-game content, arena, ether rates offense, ether rates defense, and he can be used for arena scoring as I said before, and he doesn't require any kind of dual skill because he can reach 170 BST, and he's got great bulk for taking on Whaley nets, and mobility is also really appreciated. Also, he takes less grails than young Minerva, our previous free unit, who is a Tempest Trial unit, so she's gonna be requiring you more Grails, and this can make him cheaper investment overall. Now, there might be your reasons why you may not want to invest into him. The first one is that you're not interested in enemy phase flyers. A lot of people really like flyers, um, like in the player phase, where they could trigger Gale Force, be really offensive, and stuff like that, and maybe a tanky flyer is not your cup of tea. The other point is that if you're really serious about Arena, then Investing into a 170 BST unit at this point is not going to be helping you future-proof yourself uh, for scoring in Arena because Arena score creep is just so ruthless. Um, as of this week when I'm making this video, 756 points per match is not even enough to stay in tier 21. So while he's a really really good unit to be used in Arena, he's not exactly the most optimal choice. There are other options like Itsuki, Flame Emperor, and stuff like that. In future, when we do get Grailable 180 BSC units, they are going to be more optimal for scoring. So if you're super serious about Arena, then he's good, but he's not the best option. That's going to be it for this review. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank all of my YouTube members for all of their support. And if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me so much. And share this video with your friends who are really excited about Ashnard and are going to be working on a merch project on him. Also subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as fast as Ashnard. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.